Good to see everyone again. Uh, Ray was kind enough to give me a few minutes on stage to talk about uh, stupid bots. Um, and if you were reading any tech news earlier this year, it seemed like there was like three months there where the entire tech media was convinced that bots were going to take over the world. Uh, it's like Facebook launched a bot platform, Microsoft launched a bot platform, Slack had this bot marketplace. Um, and they've certainly been growing, but they haven't quite taken over the world yet. Um, but I thought it would be fun to take a few minutes to create a bot. Um, now, they were talking about in the news like all these bots that would do super useful things, you know, and like be able to buy stuff and shop that way. Uh, I, I don't think we need to do anything like that. I say we just create like a stupid bot um, and whose sole purpose is to be funny. Um, and in fact, I thought maybe something fun to do would be to create a bot that allows you to have a conversation uh, with your favorite Twitter personality. Um, and so in order to do this, we're going to use an artificial intelligence, if you want to call it that, uh, called uh, Markov chains. Uh, who here has used a Markov chain or are familiar with the term? All right, cool. So for those of you who uh, aren't, the general idea behind a Markov chain is that you feed it a corpus of text. So you feed it as much text as you can get, right? So you can imagine like the works of Shakespeare. And then you use that text to create sentences that sound like that corpus, all right? And so you would go through and you'd say, pick a random word, and then you say, based on what we know about this author, what are the chances of the, you know, what should the, what's the highest probability next word that comes up? Um, and then it just does this iteratively and generates sentences. So even if you don't know the phrase, you probably use Markov chains every day because it's what powers the auto-suggest on your phone, right? And so if you just keep hitting the button over and over again, you're going to generate sentences. Your phone's using all of the text that you've ever typed in order to generate that. So Markov chains, uh, sentences generated by them are not always coherent, uh, but they are typically funny, uh, and that works for us. Now, in order to, to, uh, to create our bot, we're going to need a few pieces. Um, so first, we're going to need a corpus of text. So we're going to need a history of short sayings by someone. And we will use uh, a Twitter personality. But Markov chains, you know, you really, in order to get their full potential, need to use someone who has a big personality. You know, and you need to use someone who has a distinct tweeting style. And here at Rails, uh, Windy City Rails, and the birthplace of Rails, I feel like there's only one person that we could use uh, for this who would make sense, um, and, uh, and that would be DHH. Um, I've also built this as a Trump bot, but I thought it'd be better to uh, stay away from, <laughs> just in case, I don't know if anyone, so, uh, but, uh, but, you know, that, that was the original play, but let's just uh, keep it safe here. Um, so we're going to use DHH, and in order to do that, we need to get all of his tweets out, right? And so fortunately, Twitter has uh, a pretty fun API here. Um, it's, they really locked down some of the stuff you can do with it, but you can pull down the last 3,000 tweets that somebody's had. So what I did here is just create, you go to apps.twitter.com, and you create a new Twitter application. And then from that application, you can get a consumer key, and, an, uh, and you can see here, like, uh, here, keys and access tokens up here. And you're going to get four different pieces of credentials that you'll then plug in to your app. Here it is here. Consumer API, consumer secret, access token, access token secret. And there is a gem, uh, simply enough, called Twitter. Uh, and you can install the gem. And then you can drop in your credentials. And then that gives you a client to connect to the Twitter API. And then you can plug in the uh, username. Uh, that you want to uh, pull tweets from, tell it how many you want. Now, you can only pull down 200 at a time, but you can get a total of 3,000. So for real, if we were doing this for real, we'd iterate through this, but I just wanted to do it this way so that it'd make it a little bit easier uh, for the sake of not running through a whole bunch of nested loops. Um, but we'll, we'll take a look at all the tweets here in a minute. Um, and then once I get the tweets, I'm going to run them through, and I'm going to just clean out the tweets a little bit, all right? So we're going to end up building an SMS bot, and I want the messages that we get back to feel more like text messages than tweets. And so I just wrote this really quick cleaner that just goes through and it will, can you all see that okay? Uh, it just goes through and removes kind of like the tweety things, right? So we take out links, hashtags, retweets, videos, et cetera. So what we want to be left with is just a bunch of messages that came right from the person who we're, we're scraping from, all right? 
Uh, and then what I'm just doing is I'm dropping all of those tweets into a text file. All right, and that will give me a corpus of, of text. So if I come over here and I run Ruby uh, get tweets, then this thing will run, and then I can come back in here in Sublime, and I can take a look at DHH's tweets, and we can see them here. All right, and so these are the, the clean version of the tweets, so, uh, or the cleaned up version of the tweets. So now we have a corpus of text to work with, uh, and I went ahead and I downloaded all of the tweets uh, so we wouldn't have to uh, uh, go through that process here. Um, but now what we need to do is create a Markov chain based on those tweets. And there is uh, another gem. Uh, it's called uh, Marky Markov. Uh, <laughs> it's a pretty great name. Um, and Marky Markov is super simple to use. So you just you, you require the gem, and then you feed it a text file. And you could also feed it um, you know, text from basically anywhere. It has, but in this case, we have all of our stuff stored in a, a text file. So we'll just read that in. And then it has just a few methods that you use to generate sentences based on that model that was just created. So if we run this again, and we do generate Markov, then we can start seeing uh, tweets in the style of DH, or text in the style of DHH. All right? Uh, all right, cool. So we have now um, a way to generate sentences that sound like DHH said them. All right, and so now we need a way to communicate with them. And so I thought we would build an SMS bot here. And this will allow all of you then to interact with DHH. Uh, so again, just like this morning, if you want to pull out your phone, we're going to write this thing. Um, and it, in order to build this, I went ahead and I bought a 312 phone number. Um, and what we're going to do here in just a minute is configure this phone number to point to an app in Sinatra that we're writing right here. Uh, in order to respond to incoming text messages using the Markov chains that we generated. All right, and just in the interest of time, I downloaded all of DHH tweets and I generated a whole bunch of Markov chains and I put them into a CSV file just so we wouldn't have to be doing this on the fly every time. Um, but you can see them here. And you can see that we have a whole bunch of Markovs to pull from. All right, and so then I also have uh, a file that I wrote ahead of time. This just opens up the CSV, grabs a random one uh, from, from the array that it creates, and then we have a method down here that we'll use too, which we'll address in a minute. Um, all right, so I'm gonna use Sinatra. Who here has used Sinatra before? All right, cool, so a lot of you. Um, so Sinatra, uh, who here, I'm guessing the, those of you who didn't raise your hand have probably uh, used Rails, given the name of the conference. Um, <laughs> so if you haven't used Sinatra before, Sinatra is a lightweight uh, framework for building web applications in Ruby. So as you'll see in just a second, you can often create simple web applications using a single, uh, like a single file or just two or three files. Um, and so you, instead of defining controllers and, uh, and routes in a separate file, what we can do here is we can set up a route and tell this route to accept, or tell our web app here, to accept post requests on a message endpoint, all right? Um, and then what's gonna happen here is when y'all text this Twilio phone number, then Twilio is gonna make an HTTP request to this app. And it's going to send data about that text message over in the parameters of that post request. So similar to if uh, someone were to submit a form on your site and you make a post request to an endpoint in order to process that. All right, and so what Twilio expects in return is a response to its HTTP request. And we're gonna tell Twilio to reply with a message. And that message is going to use the Markov uh, file that I wrote to send back a DHH Markov chain like this. All right, and then just for the fun of it, just in case you want to add him to your uh, uh, address book and you need a uh, picture of him in order to do that, uh, I went ahead and just took the liberty of snagging, for your convenience, uh, a few pictures of DHH. Uh, I think this is right. Let me just double make sure that I did the, yeah, random DHH pick. That's what I'm looking for. All right, and so we're going to send back two messages to you. Uh, when you text this in. So the first one is, what's that? Oh, okay, cool, thank you. 
Uh, if you all see me do something wrong, please, please tell me. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so you're going to text this number here in just a second. You're going to get two messages back. One will just be a text message with the text. The other one is going to be a picture. It's going to be an MMS. All right, and so we're going to come over here to our uh, uh, phone number, and I'm going to tell it that when a text comes in to send a post request to this endpoint here, and this is uh, the file that we just wrote. Let's flip over and just make sure that Sinatra started up fine, and it did. Um, so if y'all want to text this number, it is, uh, and I would say, why don't you text either your burning question for DHH, or just hit auto-suggest on your keyboard and send it a Markov chain of your own. And I will say, we're going to put these up on the screen, so for the sake of my continued employment, please don't put anything uh, terrible. Uh, in there. Remember, we do have this code of conduct. Uh, so 312-248-6701. Again, that's 312-248-6701. If anyone gets something back, shout out. Let me hear. You got it back. All right, it's a disparity. All right. Does it sound vaguely like DHH? Does it sound like you, something you could hear him saying? All right, so one more time, 312-248-6701. 6701, if anyone hasn't texted that yet. All right. So now text bots are, uh, are, are you know, we're kind of all the rage messaging bots. Um, but I kind of want to like go even older school and talk about phone bots, right? And like voice bots. Wouldn't it be cool if you could have a voice conversation with DHH? All right. And so I'm going to uh, open up a new file called calls.rb, and I'm going to use the Twilio Ruby helper library. And I'll use that helper library to create a new REST client. And that client is going to use my account credentials for Twilio. And then I'm going to reach into my Twilio account. And I'm going to grab a list of all the messages that y'all just sent to that phone number that we just bought. And then I'm going to step through each message. And with each message, I'm going to output the body of the message. So this is going to be your burning questions to DHH. Uh, and then with that, uh, with, uh, so with that being put out on the screen and I have the message right there, I can use that client again and I can create a new phone call and that phone call is going to be to the number that you sent your message from and it's going to be from my Twilio number and then it's going to have a URL that is going to tell Twilio where to look to for um, instructions when you, when, uh, when you pick up the phone. All right, and so what we're going to have you do here in just a minute is to answer your phone, put it on speakerphone, and so we can have DHH give us all a personalized message. Uh, the instructions for that call are going to look so similar here that we'll just actually copy and paste. Um, but instead of responding to a call, we're responding to a message. And instead of um, re sending a reply M uh, SMS, we can do a couple different things here. So first off, we could uh, uh, dial a phone number. So we could forward this call over. So that's like how Uber, if you ever call your Uber driver, um, you're not calling their personal cell phone. You're calling the Twilio number that's being forwarded to that number. So it's like called anonymous calling. Um, we could uh, also just create like a conference line. We could drop everyone in a, into a conference call together. But since we're all in the same room, that doesn't really seem that useful. Uh, and we could also play an MP3. Uh, but for our purposes, I feel like it would just be funnier to uh, have uh, to grab another Markov chain here, and we will have a robot voice say that. Uh, and just for fun, we will have it say it over and over and over again. Um, all right, so again, make a post request here, look for instructions. The instructions say, hey, say this. So uh, we'll come over here, and we will run uh, that file. And we should see messages as they come in. And uh, thank you so far, at least, for keeping them relatively clean. Uh, well, it looks like it's fully clean, so that's, uh, that's great. Uh, much appreciate that. Uh, and then your phone should ring here uh, in a minute. And uh, as they ring, uh, just give them an answer and, uh, and let us know if you, uh, you hear something here. You got it? Yeah. All right, you have the sweet, sweet voice of, uh, of DHH uh, calling there. So, uh, so that's it. So that's, uh, j again, just a, a fun way to create bots. Um, using Markov chains. Um, there's also, if you really want to go further down this rabbit hole, uh, IBM Watson has a really great uh, API that they used, um, and you can use it to create some really interesting uh, uh, a like actual artificial intelligence for your bots. Um, and if you want to learn more about how to do the Twilio side of this stuff, 
Uh, again, you can just check out docs that uh, Twilio.com slash docs. They just put a whole bunch of uh, work into this, as Donald Trump would say. Uh, I think we have made our docs great again. Um, and uh, so you can come on here and you can uh, just select you know, the, that you're doing Ruby and uh, what kind of products you'd work for. We also have a programmable chat now um, so that you could build uh, chat bot interfaces with Facebook and whatnot. So uh, again, my name is Greg. If you all have any questions about this stuff, I'd uh, love to chat. Thank you all so very much.